Good afternoon. It's uh, a Sunday afternoon, May 14th, 2017, and I want to offer some reflections on our website, which we launched May 1st, 2006. The theme of these reflections is lessons learned in service to the memory of my sister. Our mission specifically is to offer hope and help with tangible addiction prevention and recovery resources. And I'm grateful for that opportunity and grateful for some of the information that has come my way in the past 11 years. I'd sum it up in six words. That is, to expect nothing, to receive gracefully, and to share more. So I wanted to find a way, after my sister died, to deal with the grief. And I did that in 2000 by composing some music for my sister. It was like a song cycle, it was called Laura. And I'm so grateful to all the musicians <clears throat> that participated in this particular project. But that didn't get all the grief out. And then about five years later, I did another CD, which is more about the celebration of life. And at this point, I was beginning to formulate in my head some ideas relative to my sister and what we might do that was a little more concrete in service to her memory. So I decided on the idea of a website. And the most important thing of that website was an accountability measure, which was the counter. This was before major analytics. So this way I would know from the counter whether people were coming or not, and whether this was having an impact. We started out with just about four web pages, and it's grown. It has a community component now as well. I'd say the three most important areas here are, in reverse order, number three, philanthropy, with a huge thankful contribution from matching sources. So that's number three. And since service, actually, we've had nine different programs that we've helped with. Uh, through Central City Concern, for instance, we have a Laura's Place, <clears throat> which has helped over 100 women, 90 children, at a location in Portland, Northeast, undisclosed. I'm so grateful for this. It's moved from a fourplex to a sixplex. And I've gotten to play piano a couple of years to raise money for it. <clears throat> We've helped with programs of the YWCA, and Union Gospel Mission, and I'm grateful for all those opportunities and for the raising of funds and for matching funds in these areas. However, <clears throat> it taught me something very important, which is what is the money being raised for? Well, program and specific ways of helping both with prevention and recovery. So this takes us to the second area that is important to me, which is recovery. So we started out with just a simple idea. How could we affirm those, all over the world for that matter, in a format for recovery? And I came up with the idea of simply recruiting sobriety anniversaries and growing that community, which we have done. And I found also that through using Stephen Covey concepts, specifically synergize and giving ownership of our recovery goal, sobriety anniversaries goal, that would be very helpful. So we have a sobriety anniversaries page, starting out with nobody and no anniversary years. It is now 1,074 champions who celebrate 18,500 years of sobriety. I'm so grateful to all of them, especially the ones who will say maybe, well, there's a good number, percentage, that declare on their very first day that they're going to live a clean and sober life. And I'm immensely grateful for that. So we just give them the opportunity on a web page to anonymously give their date. And that's it then they're part of a community. But they can know at any time, day or night, that they're part of this community and it continues to grow. And I have sort of been fishing for new 
participants in this 11 years by going to like-minded websites like sobriety birthdays or what's your sobriety date on Facebook and stating, cutting and pasting our website, sobriety anniversary page, and stating our goal for the month, like let's say we wanted to have 15 new participants, tell them the number of years and the number of people, as an example, maybe eight years ago, say we had 250 participants and we had 3,400 years and maybe we wanted to have 30 by the end of the month and maybe by the end of the year we wanted to have another 50 who were participating in another thousand years. So that has worked to our benefit. We do state a goal on our sobriety anniversary page every year, which is we want a thousand new sobriety anniversary years to be celebrated by the end of that calendar year. And it has grown. It's also grown in terms of my wanting to get some media coverage and letting folks know uh, about that and what our progress is and sharing that and watching the incremental progress. I'm very grateful. So we've gone from philanthropy, number three, to sobriety anniversaries, that's recovery, and number one, most important thing to me, prevention. Why? Well, because in the recovery area, we know just generally we have uh, about 10% of our population in the United States, which is over 400 million, so that's 40 million folks who are addicted to drugs and or alcohol, primarily alcohol. And we know, unfortunately, that only 15% of that population actually seeks help, so that takes it down to 6 million. And we know that it is a tough process even for those 15%. So we want to offer sustenance and support, and we think we can do that through community. So we're grateful for that opportunity. Prevention even more important, because it seems to me that if the addiction is not an issue to begin with, then you don't have to deal with prevention down the road. How do you do that? Well, I read Joseph Califano's, about Califano's work, Columbia University, CASA. He's written a couple of books, High Society and How to Raise a Drug-Free Kid. And he says how important it is to not start before 20 or 20 one, actually 21, drinking or drugging. Because if you get to 21, most of the information shows that there won't be an addiction issue in for the rest of the life of that particular child. So we have heavy emphasis on that. We just go for 25 new sobriety pledges every year. That's all we want. Average is one every other week. And we have met goal. We now have 312 participants who honor mind, body, and spirit without drinking or drugging before 21. We're grateful to each and every one of them. The way I look at it, that's like avoiding 50 plus years of heartache if you're on the other side of addiction and need to be in recovery. More power to all that are in recovery, but I number one item in service to the memory of honoring Laura is prevention, and I've learned that. That's one of my lessons. Going back to original six words, I expect nothing, I receive gracefully, and I share more. So that's what we do at the website. We honor my sister's memory. And that is a bit of reflection on this beautiful May day. As we look forward to a concert private concert being given in this very space later in the day for my sweetheart, Janet.